Hi and welcome! This is the cheapest smartwatch I have reviewed so far in 2019. It even has a backlight, if it's not too bright in the surroundings. It costs less than $20. I was very excited, but then I got disappointed because probably I had too high expectations. I guess the higher expectations you have, the greater the disappointment could be. And uh, if you're wondering what's going on, this is a goalkeeper glove. And no, I did not hurt my hand. There's a story about it, so let's go! Hey, welcome to the tech for all channel. My name is Michael. What we do here is to review cool tech and when this cool tech could be budget-friendly, that's even better. Um, this, this one is not just budget-friendly, it costs less than Mi Band 2. It's uh, significantly less than the Mi Band 3. It's, it's less than $20, which is uh, quite a psychological border and uh, like you can buy 20 of these at the price of Apple Watch 4. So let's not have too high expectations about this one. I'll say the front, there have been moments where I simply wanted to take it off my wrist, place it on a flat surface and use a hammer to improve its mm, design. My first annoyment was when I was playing football as a goalkeeper. Looks like always when there's contact between the fabric and the wrist, it reacts and treats it as a touch action and messes around with the menus, which makes it impossible to properly measure a running cycle or even just a basic football game and your vitals. Also, if you press the home button during sports activity, it exits the sport mode and you don't really know what happens with the sports data. And like that, I kept using it, my frustration kept growing, until at some point I sat down to prepare this review and I found out, okay, it costs $20, so this performance kind of makes good sense. Uh, this smartwatch was sent to me by the AliExpress shop St. Berno and they claim to have designed this thing. I don't know whether that's true or false. I would assume it is. So um, you can find it on their website, but uh, as I already mentioned, you can find it with different brands and names and you can purchase it online at quite a similar price. No matter what kind of brand you get, it's all about the same thing. In this review, I want to pay special attention to, yes, the user experience, and I'll share a bit more about that <laughs> together with it. Uh, I'm going to talk about the hardware and the software so that you can make up your mind whether these $20 are worth it or not. It arrives in a small box. Inside, you're going to find the watch, the manual and the charger. First thing to notice, and one of the few that make good impression, there's a screen protector, which, considering the fact it is with a plastic screen, is a great idea. But you can see that the screen protector doesn't fit too well, so I got a little annoyed and removed it. Luckily for two weeks I didn't get any serious scratches, but I was quite careful. Don't forget it's plastic coverage, it's not even a glass. We can see cheap plastic design, surprisingly quick release trap, which by the way is good, the charging pins, the sensor at the bottom, and this kind of design around the sensor underlines even more where that watch belongs. I can't take it seriously with this sensor compartment. On the other side, it is claimed to be waterproof. So that's sort of explanation about this design. It's fair to mention that for less than a week, the paint over here on the strap lock fell down. And I say it's good because uh, it's one of the very few elements which look like metal. The chipset is HS6620D, the first time I ever tried that one. And hopefully the last time. The 120 mAh battery lasts for around 5 days with my kind of usage, which is rather conservative. If you check some of the other smartwatch reviews, you will notice that often I can squeeze better than the average battery life. This 1.3 inch color TFT screen, which when being observed in office environment is great, however is almost useless in daylight, especially if you wear sunglasses. There's a touch area at the bottom part of the screen, so you can do the navigation with it. Um, short taps and long presses is what the watch accepts. There's a button on the side, short press to go to the home menu, long press to put it into standby mode. Hardware-wise, it proves the point of being cheap and in my opinion not really exciting. The software now, besides step count and calorie estimation, the SO8 can measure heart rate blood pressure and oxygen levels. You don't have to be genius to guess that 
on an $80 smartwatch, these sensors will be far from accurate. I even have the feeling that some of the values may be hard-coded. It's not a surprise to me that the watch can sense the pose of a table. We've seen this with more expensive brands, but with my prolonged usage, I'm quite unhappy with the accuracy of the measurements and perhaps the only sort of trustworthy value is the heart rate. I had numerous issues with the connectivity, often it was not showing notifications about incoming calls and alarms and that's pretty annoying. Also, in the moments where this was working, I never managed to get the caller ID to be shown and all the app permissions are set right, so I can't really say what's going on, it just doesn't want to show the caller ID is probably an update is necessary. There are plenty of sports modes and I hardly manage to record any data as either the goalkeeper glove or the sleeve or just a random touch was interrupting the cycle. Also, I really hate this kind of navigation, it's so outdated and no one deserves such kind of experience in 2019. I would easily give 10 or more bucks for getting decent screen with reasonable navigations back and forth in the menus. To me, it looks like the designers of the SO8 were more focused on bringing a greater quantity of features rather than focusing on their quality and accuracy. Um, carrying on with more of the features, the smartphone app, which is at least a relief, I, I would say it's rather good. It's called Da Fit, and we've seen it working with other smartwatches, and with some remarks, it can do the job right. Clean interface, no Google Fit integration, but at least shows good summary from the watch. At the end, among my numerous complaints, like the build quality, the not optimal menus, the frustration with the short battery life and unwanted touches, we have to admit that the price is really tempting, often below $20. It costs 10 times less than the Amazfit Stratos, uh, 20 times less than uh, Apple Watch Series 4, and you get the idea. If I have to relate it to something budget friendlier, I don't know, it's, it's at the level of a cheap smart band. That's where I would put it. Honestly, when I came back to wearing my beloved Amazfit Stratos, I was really happy and I hope I don't sound too rude with that. Don't get me wrong, this watch is great for its money. Uh, for $20 it's hard to find better specs or probably you can find better specs in some of the smart bands, but uh, in terms of style and overall performance, with the exception of these super annoying touch issues, I can say that's an okay thing to buy. Maybe you can tell me what you think about it in the comments right below the video. My name is Michael. Last thing I want to wish you is to be healthy, to trust your vitals to things that can really measure that. And I want to wish you a very great day. See you in the next episode.